Am I framed up okay where I'm sitting? You're good. Okay. Framed very nicely. Hair looks good. All right, good. Do I have flyaways? <laughs> you, you would say oh, that. Sure, we don't care about you. You would say that even if it looked bad. <laughs> That's what I'm worried about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't worry about the meanness. All right, we're ready. We're mm -hmm. looking good. And Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 29th Sedona International Film Festival. I'm your host, Carol Kahn. We are coming to you live from Yavapai College. We'd like to thank Yavapai College as one of our sponsors, along with Northern Arizona Healthcare, the City of Sedona, BMO Bank, Golden Sign Gallery, and the whole list of sponsors that we have, hoteliers, restaurateurs. We just want to thank everybody for their participation in this year's festival. We truly appreciate all of you. And joining me now is Lance with your film. Introduce the film for us, please. Uh, yes, sure. The, the film is called The Shadow Between Us. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm the director, producer, filmmaker, <laughs> kind of jack of all trades of the film. And uh, it is a film uh, about healing the racial divide through the arts, through, you know, sort of working on conflict resolution through the vehicle of the arts. And, and, and the whole project came about during the pandemic, when everything was shut down, um, I got a phone call from uh, the uh, brilliant, uh, the brilliant um, person who came up with the initial idea for the film. His name is Obadiah Baker. He's a major in the army, a Fulbright scholar now, um, working on his PhD. I mean, he, he's he's an incredible person who had this idea of how can he make. In particular, how can he, after the death of George Floyd, how can he make people understand uh, what it means to be a black person being pulled over by a police officer or, or in these, you know, very harrowing situations. And, and so he was uh, actually walking through New York City one day and he saw this, he saw this mural uh, that basically, basically said, you know, uh, I can't remember the, ex the exact words, but it basically said that we were all connected by the same color shadow. And so that was sort of the seed of this film, was he, he, he kind of came up with this idea that he wanted to commission a shadow dance about racism. And so then the film really goes into kind of the creative process behind doing something like that, you know? I get goosebumps when you said that because, <clears throat> excuse me, it's so true, you know, as far as like color and all that kind of stuff. So um, brilliant title for that. I have lots of questions that I want to ask you, and, but since you gave a great intro to the trailer, let's take a look at that first and then we'll, we'll talk yeah, more. Yeah, absolutely. Where I grew up, anger was easy to find. Always a fight, black and white. It's a fight every step of the way. Flashing lights, guns on our streets, something minor ends your life. We are stronger together than apart. One day, the world stopped. Shattered homes, everyone drowning in screams of silence. A pandemic? Everything was canceled. It was a scary time for all of us. Fear. How do I cross to the other side? Racism or repentance? We must rise up. Can we heal the divide between shadows and light, between black and white? My friend wanted me to fight. To go to Colorado and to seek answers. A seed to plant against racism and injustice. A performance to bring light to the darkness. George Floyd woke us up. We took to the streets. Trayvon Martin, Ahmaud Aubrey, Dante Wright. Never forget. 
around the world, black and white, every color, united as one. I believe that change needs to happen, but not by beating up shop owners and burning down small businesses. The bones of our forefathers lie beneath my feet. They try to make a better world, but their hopes ended in violence and broken dreams. We must find the beat of our generation. We must resurrect our dreams, listen to the spirits of our ancestors. I'm dreaming of a new city where flowers rise up on the tombs of history. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Brilliant. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you for bringing this <clears throat> to the festival. You know, it's interesting. Um, just recently, and this has nothing to do with that, but the subject matter does, is that um, here in Sedona, the art center here did a, um, a whole thing on for Black History Month on diversity, right? Mm -hmm. Called Sounds and Vision. And conversations are like, why is that here in Sedona? Because we don't have a huge black population. Mm -hmm. And so it's to get the message out, right? At mm -hmm. least whatever it is. And in that process, um, interviewed um, two, three black artists. And one of them, um, one of them was uh, older, the other one was younger. And I had mm -hmm. asked, do you actually feel like doing these kinds of things, your film included, makes a change or is making a change in society, right? Because it's, it just mm -hmm. feels like this has been like centuries and centuries and, and we're trying to communicate that to make a big change. Mm -hmm. And um, both young and old said yes. And even the younger person said, they're beginning to see change now, like just mm -hmm. in the younger population and acceptance and, and you're starting to see things, you know, but we're, st we're still in that like place. So in doing this and following this mm -hmm. message um, that, you, that you portrayed here, how do you feel like the message is being received and do you, in fact, being a part of this, see change happening? Yeah, you know, I, f I feel like the pandemic was this pause, you know, for all of us. Um, you know, it's like a rough ocean and all of a sudden it made this very smooth ponded surface, you know, where everything was still again. And we all had a moment to come back and sit and and really think about what happened. And, and in the midst of all that, uh, the, the George Floyd incident happened. And that just, I think it was, you know, a step too far for many people. And that's why you saw what you saw happen back then. And so, you know, in the, in that, you know, you throw a stone in, in a ripple, you know, you throw the uh, stone in, and make a ripple and wonder if you can change things. And I think that's what happened during the pandemic is a lot of people had that moment, uh, including myself to, you know, what can we do? You know, how can we try to affect change in our, in our own way? And so, yes, I, I think, you know, my film is, is a result of one single creative effort and, and really looking into the, what, how that came about and what was the backstory of the artists that were involved. You know, what did they bring to the table in this creation? And um, I think that's what I was personally trying to do is just show how we all can make uh, a difference, you know, yeah. if we work together. Yeah, absolutely. And you're a photojournalist, yes. which um, is amazing because you like work in situations like this as well. And do you feel at any given point, being whether a photojournalist, journalist, filmmaker, that in some way you're almost like an, an activist, not a full on in your face activist, but mm -hmm. silently you are like portraying things that people really need to understand and change? Yeah, I think uh, what, what photojournalism taught me is how to be an observer of human nature. I mean, I. I uh, as most pho photojournalists would tell you, we go to an event and we spend an hour to three hours just 
watching people predicting behavior, you know, anticipating behavior and, and trying to make beautiful photos out of, you know, trying to bring everything together into this kind of summary statement about uh, what's happening or a protest, for example, you know, what one image would really tell the story of a protest. I mean, George Floyd, uh, there was countless <laughs> images after that and then lots of violence and, you know, that's a whole other story as a photojournalist is, you know, a lot of a lot of photo editors spend a lot of time really debating sort of how are you objective in this situation? How, how do you be impartial in this situation? Or are you kind of inflaming things more? Yeah, how so. do you separate yourself from that? I mean, you know, it's really interesting because even from you working in it, you know, and looking at this and also, you know, the violence, right? Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't just in that one place. It went nationwide. So like in Greensboro, North Carolina, for example, where, where I'm from, um, the whole streets, like people like broke mm -hmm. windows and, mm -hmm. you know, same kind of thing, protested and it was mm -hmm. crazy. And it sort of leaves, it leaves a hole in, in you. Like, what do, what do we do now? Like, where, where are we? Right. Yeah, and I think that's the, the real question was, you know, um, and, and if you watch the film, there's a, there's a, uh, there's several, um, exchanges between some of the characters in the film. The main character, Nehemiah, speaks to his pastor and he speaks to um, different people. He speaks to an author about Cleveland's racial history. And he, so he's sort of learning, he learns a story about how um, the Huff riots in Cleveland, which was a big uh, racial injustice that happened um, in, in the wake of Martin Luther King's killing and a lot of other things that happened there, uh, but how it, you know, there was this amazing billion dollar anti-poverty program. Cleveland had just uh, elected their first black mayor, which was amazing. Uh, I mean, the f first black mayor in the country was elected in Cleveland, uh, Carl Stokes. And so there was this shooting of some people uh, against, they shot the cops um, in, in this in this shooting and it, and it caused this huge rioting and then fires and all kinds of things and and it turns out that the rioting had started with Cleveland Now money which was an anti-poverty program so like literally that killed this anti-poverty program violence um, and, and also uh, um, Malcolm X had given his ballots and bullets speech there which was all about how can we make change through voting or through violence you know and and so if voting doesn't get you where you need to go, then violence is the next step. So I think the point of all of that was just that violence killed this amazing anti-poverty program in Cleveland. And so, you know, George Floyd is a good example of like, okay, did this, did the violence of George Floyd, did that get us anywhere? And, and I think it certainly raised awareness around the world, but now what's next, you know? Yeah, I know it's it's a it's a hard issue because you know as you think like as I'm thinking about it, and even at the end of the film where it's like it instead of hate you know there's love, mm -hmm. and we could talk about that till we're blue in the face and how many people it's almost like mm -hmm. the domino effect right? It's, but it doesn't mm -hmm. move as quickly as the dominoes do when they're going around. Right. So you just yeah. hope that you like put that little message, and hope that it affects one, two, three, four, it doesn't matter how many people, just as long as it affects a, a lot of people to get the message out there. Right, yeah. Yeah, and also um, accolades to you, you're a three-time Emmy Award winner, is that correct? Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> as you look down, yes. you should be really proud of that, you're well, very humble. <laughs> well. <laughs> and what was what were the Emmys for? Uh, it was a project I did um, on, for the Memphis Chamber of Commerce, actually, on, on um, kind of uh, basically there were profiles of small businesses but we ended up collaborating with the Memphis Symphony Orchestra and then we had a live performance uh, where the orchestra played live to the videos and all the business community came in and watched it so it was it was a, a great character is a unique project about eight different films we made called the soundtrack project awesome so, yeah Look, and then the other two uh, it was all the same project. The, all the same project. Yeah. yeah, it was all the same project. Kudos. Yay. Yeah, thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. <laughs> well, and tell us, how can people find out about your film? Uh, there is a website. Um, probably have, need to make it a few tweaks to it, but it's called, the, it's just, I think, theshadowbetweenus.com. 
Um, if you can remember, I am personally, my, my company is called the storyspeaks.com because I'm a, as a journalist, I'm a strong believer in story. So that's kind of my. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. yeah. Stories are like the way to go. <laughs> yes. Right. <laughs> it is. It's the shortest distance between two people. I say. A story. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to have to use that. I'm going to steal yes. it. <laughs> or we can steal collaborate away. on something. I stole, I stole it from others too. So. <laughs> Still well, that's away. brilliant. Yes. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for bringing your brilliant film and the voice to here to us here in Sedona, yeah. and keep doing the amazing work that you're doing. And hey, yeah, thank you. And there is one more screening on Saturday at four, I believe. Okay, so, awesome. So yes, come okay. one, come all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, awesome. And, and do you know where it is? It's showing? Uh, let's see. The Is there a Mary? Mary D. Fisher Theater. I think so. Okay. I think that's where it is. Awesome. 4 yeah. p.m. <laughs> yeah, I believe so. Look it up in your guide, though. <laughs> All right, Lance. Yes. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. Yeah. And I uh, look forward to seeing you throughout the festival. Thank you, Carol. <laughs> yeah. And uh, don't forget mm. to follow us live on Facebook. And the hashtags are SIFF. 23 and Sedona Film Fest 23. We'll be back with more from the Sedona International Film Festival after this. Mm.